Hail to the king, baby. Body parts on the concrete, cut them up, put your stab gators in the swamp. Red light, leave them dead, running like a track meet. Scared of nobody, what your motherfuckers want. Man, this hell looks just like paradise. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be starting off with Dead Island as part of my series that I'm going to be doing on all the Dead Island games and Dying Light games. So let's go ahead and start talking about Dead Island and why it's my all-time favorite zombie game ever and is the embodiment of everything I ever wanted from a zombie game. I've been a huge fan of zombies since I was a kid watching the Dawn of the Dead remake, which is one of my favorite zombie films, and even the original Night of the Living Dead, which is a fantastic film. And of course, I played plenty of games with zombies before Dead Island, like Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, Dead Rising 2, or even Call of Duty Zombies. I'll I always loved when zombie-like things were inserted in games in unique ways, like the flood in Halo or the headcrab zombies in Half-Life 2. Dead Island was a game, like everyone else, I heard about from the initial cinematic trailer, and even learned a bit about its troubled history prior to that. It fell off my radar for a while, and after it released, I rented it in the early days of Redbox and played it on my uncle's PS3. In that moment, I fell in love with a game that would go on to be one of my favorite games ever made. I shared my experience with my siblings and friends and even got them into the game. It was one of the first games I played online after Call of Duty. So all in all, it's a very special game to me, and it's still a game I play at least once a year. So let me explain why I love it so much. Dead Island is the perfect zombie sandbox, where you can explore to your heart's content, and there's so much most will never come across or even experience. It's not as densely packed like Prey or anything, but it has a lot to find in its world. All the locations from the resort to the city, jungle, or even the prison are quite varied and different. It's like a zombie B-movie come to life, and I love it for that. A cool example of things you can miss is an entire side path on the island if you go right after saving Cinnamoy and leaving the bungalow. You can find a bunker that will later have a side quest that you will only find if you go back there purely by exploring. You don't get any notifications, no radio contact, nobody even tells you that the quest is there or the guy is there, and it actually opens up an entire bunker that you can go inside of, and I think is one of the bunkers that has a like extra part that sends you to another bunker. There's a lot of cool little things like that. So if you continue following this path, it'll lead you to several weapon chests for potentially higher tier weapons, and eventually you'll find yourself at a gas station you'll later come across, and you can finish the water dance quest early and save yourself some time later on when you're doing a main quest. You can come across several quests throughout the game you'll only find from exploring the nooks and crannies of the island. You can run across several radios giving hints on how to find certain people in need of assistance, like getting a vague hint from an NPC in Dark Souls or Elden Ring. They just give you like, oh, I need help in bungalow, blah, 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 or hey, I'm trapped in a lifeguard shack out on the beach and stuff like that. Hello? If anyone can hear me, I'm trapped in a lifeguard booth by the beach. I'm surrounded by the infected and they're clawing to get in. I need help. If someone can hear me, hurry! And all these things are extremely rewarding when you do find them, so it's worth exploring every inch of the game. In every area of the game, the resort, the city, everything, there's so much secret stuff that the story doesn't send you anywhere near. You can actually get your first firearm from a very hard to find side quest line in the bungalows near the hotel that from what I've seen most people miss. You'll be looking for this guy named Omar Torres. At the time and even to this day it was like they took some of my favorite things in other great games and melded it into one game. The RPG skill trees and multiple characters like Borderlands, the crafting and picking up weapons like Dead Rising, and just the group dynamic at least in the cutscenes or in co-op similar to Left 4 Dead. Basically my zombie fever dream. The world is wacky and the story is serious which was always a weird dynamic, but it worked fine for me and still does. They improved both sides later in the standalone expansion sequel, Riptide. The magic of Dead Island is the hauntingly beautiful nature of both the visuals and the music, but also the brutal creativity of the combat. The Paradise Resort to Die For being the focus of a large portion of the game perfects this feeling. You learn about the island of Benoit's deep past and its indigenous tribes as well as the shady scientific research organization Geofarm. And that's just some of the many mysteries within Benoit, one of the several islands in the archipelago off the coast of Papua New Guinea. My love for the game has always been rooted in the zombie killing and the B-movie feel of everything. 
like how they are serious one minute helping someone burn the bodies of the dead with this just depressing score and then the next you're rescuing someone's teddy bear from a voodoo woman i mean i can't even make this shit up but that weird unbalanced tone really added to its very unique style and flair the freedom of exploration without a time limit and all the secrets or quests that can be found just kept elevating an already fantastic game in my eyes. Meeting all the unhinged minds, both good and bad, at the end of the world was always a good time. Especially Svetlana's annoying ass. Champagne! Champagne! Give it to me, baby! <laughs> Finding easter eggs was a blast, especially developer mods that also continue implementing in the Dying Light series. Of course, playing with friends or even randoms made it a truly unique experience. And it's truly an experience to die for, and I've been defending it since 2011. Nothing matches the fun you can find solo or with friends in this game. Exploring the apocalypse and killing zombies left and right? Not many games have melee combat that's as satisfying as Dead Island. And I'd never claim that it's perfect for most, but it's perfect for me and my own personal tastes. It has tons of bugs, but most are not game breaking, and it's a little rough around the edges, but that just adds to the overall charm of the game. It's janky, but in a fun and enjoyable way. I think they call it Euro Jank. But some examples of the jank are like zombies' hair disappearing when you cut their head off, which I think only happens in the remastered version, funny enough, or hitting a broken fence with a car and flying across the map to land safely on the other side, which is actually, funny enough, something that happened to me in an online match years ago on 360 with three other randoms. It's a game about survival and a story, but the gameplay, which is the main highlight of the game other than its world, of course, is about solo or cooperative mayhem in the zombie apocalypse, the wet dream of any zombie fan. At times, it even provides a nice bit of horror and can be quite challenging if you're not careful with how you tackle killing the undead hordes, especially when it comes to the mini zombie variants, such as the creepy ass suicider who asks you to kill him and whispers like there's someone still alive in there somewhere, which always creeped me the hell out, especially when I was younger. And it really reminds me of Phantoms and Prey or the Flood and Halo and how they just, there's like such something in there, they're just being infected. They're like, oh my god, help me, you know, kill me in my suffering. And it's just, it's so just creepy. Or you you got the infected who run really fast and give you ample opportunity for the most satisfying, well-timed, slow-mo decapitations you've ever seen in your life. And I'm not going to go over all of them, but I have to mention the butcher. When he was introduced in the jungle, he made me shit my pants. Afterwards, as he was running at me, I felt like this guy. Where the hell did I put that? Because I forgot I had weapons for a second because I was frozen in fear. Then I promptly died, then came back to face him and succeeded. The game is a great zombie slasher full of fun and a dash of horror. It's a paradise to die for, and you will die. But remember to have fun and enjoy yourself. Explore and collect stuff. Fight some zombies and have a blast. Lose yourself in the mayhem, come out the other end looking like Doom Guy, or looking like this guy from Army of the Dead. You choose. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope you're prepared for more Dead Island soon with my upcoming videos on Riptide and Escape Dead Island, which will include Retro Revenge as a bonus. I'll be making videos on Dead Island 2 as well as the Dying Light series, so how about you tell me some of your favorite memories from the Dead Island Dying Light series down in the comments, and I'll see you when we meet again on the island of Pelanai. I heard this scourge came from outer space.